Hello? Colin, we have a job for you. I told you, I'm out of the game. It's a big one, it's the SSE Arena, Belfast. Listen, I've already done five sold out shows at the SSE Arena. Would a sixth show not be overkill? Colin, give the people what they want. Fair enough. I'm on my way. Ah! Get us. I've never heard of you. Mate, I've done the SSE about five times for fuck's sake. Oh, why? Uh, you're the one who wears the hats and all? Yes. The beardy one? Well, kinda, yeah. Aye, the big fat baldy bastard. Mate, just take your dick out of your hand and open the fucking door. Jesus Christ. Ha <laughs> ha what a bitch. It's Geddes, actually. Geddes. 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 Fuck you. What you fuck up, dude? We're back. We got buttons. We're absolutely flying. Uh, welcome to the General Banter Podcast, my guys. Today's date is fucking 13th of fucking July, June or something like that there. Cheers for joining me. Um, you might have seen an ad for the SSE Arena there. Just a quick reminder that the tickets are on fucking sale for the 30th of September, we're doing one gig at the SSE. Uh, so grab your ticks, we'll have one big evening and have a bit of crack, you know what I mean? Uh, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm also doing, as part of that same tour, for which there will be more dates released, um, for people asking from places like England, Scotland. Yes, of course, we'll be going over there. And uh, yeah, we're doing the same show in Dublin at uh, Vicker Street, the world famous Vicker Street, we're having a swing at that. So uh, if you're if you're from Dublin, if you're from the Greater Dublin area, if you're from anywhere in Ireland, for fuck's sake, the place isn't even that big. Get yourself a ticket for Vicker Street. It'll be epic as all fuckery. You know what I mean? Up the rock. The buttons are back. I'm losing my mind. Uh, so yeah, all the, all those good things are are happening. Today's podcast is going to be a bit of a throwback. Um, we're going to take one of the 12 pods of Christmas. This episode is features Mark McCarney. So we, we go deep into the archives for a bit a bit of a, a bit of a throwback, uh, which I'm releasing publicly. Thanks to everyone who was on Patreon during uh during Christmas and got the 12 pods. And uh don't feel short change, you know what I mean? You had six you had six months to listen to this, and some of the podcasts are just very funny, and I'd like people to publicly hear those if they couldn't get themselves onto the Patreon. But it is a stark reminder, my guys, that if you're not on the Patreon, you do get a big whack of podcasts at Christmas. So uh I don't know. Get involved. Patreon.com forward slash general banter podcast. Um yeah, we do a podcast with Mark McCarney, um, funny guy. I mean, just, I mean, literally, like, you know, I have a lot of comedian friends on the scene, you know, and uh, they're all great. I love hanging out with them. But, you know, if, if hand on heart, if you were to ask me, like, who, who are you a fan of? You know, I'm a legit fan of Mark McCarney. You know, I find myself in the car listening to him. You know, I could ring him up and hear his voice, but I'm like, no, I'll drive, I'll drive to Dublin here and I'll stick on Mark McCarney's podcast and I'll listen to him ramble on, um, he, which he's absolutely a, a black belt at. The guy could just talk for days. He could read the he could read the yellow pages, and it would be funny, as they say, even though most people don't even know what a fucking yellow pages is. Um, 
I mean, what a nightmare that eight yellow pages must have been. You know, you're like, do you want a pizza? I ah, go to pay for pizza, fucking the whole way down. Oh, Jesus Christ, what a nightmare! And then you have to phone them, and then they're closed now because you can't get all the information. You can't just go, "Where's the pizza? At? What time is it closed? Can I order it?" Fuck me. But the guy's hilarious. You know, I was listening to him yesterday going down to Dublin, and uh, you know, he's talking about his dog passing away, and Jesus Christ, and I had to pull the car over. But the guy's hilarious. Great at making videos. Very unique comedian. Fantastic voice. You know, uh, and uh, we recorded a podcast back for the back in December, I think, and at his at his place. So the podcast you're going to see is recorded at his little sort of lair that he has in deep in the in the woods of Fintna. I don't know if there are woods in Fintna, but, you know, he's in the fucking sticks anyway. Uh, but we had a great time, and uh, you're going to love this podcast, man. We, You know, some of the references might be a couple of months out of date, but it doesn't matter. It's classic. When it's classic, it's classic, and you're going to love it. But before we get out of here, we'll mention a couple of sponsors, as usual. Uh, that's what keeps the wheels turning. And the guys keep coming back. So somebody's buying these nut shavers. Somebody's downloading the Cam app to fucking improve their lives. But yeah, their first sponsor, as usual, manscaped.com. Shout out to being there since day one. Um, they're, they're the world's leading device when it comes to shaving your nuts. Uh, it's a great podcast sponsor because they, they give you free will to say whatever you want. You know? And... Uh, they started off with the, the lawnmower 4.0, but they like they got everything now, man. They've got everything. They keep sending stuff to the house. The place is coming down with boxers and lawnmower 4.0s. You can shave your nuts. You can shave your clam. You can shave whatever you want. They got the weed whacker. It goes in your ear and up your nostrils. They got ball toner. They got fucking moisturizers. They got ball deodorant. They got shampoos. They got shit for doing wet shaves now if you want to. You know, shave the shave the fucking pubis down and then take her down to the wood. If you want to take her down to the wood. But what you can do is, if you listen to this podcast, go on manscaped.com. Buy the care package. That's my advice. Mark McCarney, he's on this podcast. He's a man, he, you know, he's he's not he's not he's not doing any fucking male grooming. I should send him a manscape, you know, take that beard. He's one of them boys with a beard, just mashes into the chest, mashes into the pubes, mashes into the leg hair. You know what I mean? He's a real he's a real fucking man. But I want you to go on to manscaped.com. Um, the summer's coming up. You want to have those gleaming nuts. So get the care package. Just cut through all the shit. Just buy the care package. They send you out a beautiful le leather travel bag. It's got everything in it. Lawnmower 4.0. It's got the weed whacker. It's got the ball toner. It's got the fucking this, that, deodorant. It's got boxers in there. The boxers are soft, man. Softest boxers I've ever caressed my nut bag with in all my career. And if you listen to this podcast, you use the code GENBANT1. And you get 20% off. The buttons are back. We welcome them back. Uh, which is, you know, and, you know, the care package, you're not giving them away. These are, this is a premium product, but you get that care package and you get 20% off. And uh, it all adds up, my guys. So shout out to manscaped.com. Use the code GEMBAMP1. 20% off. Wrong button. Wrong button. And our other sponsor today is the fantastic Calm app. Uh, in today's fast-paced world, taking care of your mental health is more important than ever. If you're looking to reduce stress, increase mindfulness, and improve your overall well-being, you need Calm. Calm helps you stress less, sleep more, and live a happier, healthier life. Calm recognizes that everyone faces unique challenges in their lives, that mental health needs differ from person to person. And the time for meditation may vary. And since self-practices are so deep, no, deeply personal, Calm strives to provide a content that caters to everyone's preferences and needs. Their meditations range from focuses on anxiety to stress, self-care to inner peace. They have sleep stories, relaxing music tracks, and daily movement sessions, all designed to give you the tools to improve the way you feel. They even have expert-led talks on topics such as tips for overcoming stress, anxiety, handling grief, improving self-esteem, caring for relationships, and more. Everything you need to prioritize your mental health and wellness is on Calm. If you go to calm.com slash banter, you'll receive a special offer. 40% uh, off your Calm premium subscription, and new content, is new content is added every week. Uh, we have Calm here uh, in the household. Um, it's just great. It's just one of them things. You don't have to go hoking around the internet if you want to meditate. If you want some sort of soundscape, if you want a story to listen to before you fall asleep, they've got they've got it all in one place. 
it's just a good thing to have. If you're traveling, you know, you're on a plane, you want to do a little breathing exercise quietly to yourself to reduce the stress. It is fantastic. And the stories are great. You put the, I said this before, I haven't got to the end of one of these sleep stories yet. You put them on, Kelly and Murphy comes on. How's it going? We've been traveling. Now. <clears throat> Asleep. It is phenomenal. I've used breathing exercises on a plane. You know, stressful scenario. Put on the thing. It's just like, boom. Inhale. Doom. Hold it. Boom. Release. And it works, my guys. Um, but you get 40% off if you go to calm.com slash banter, which is phenomenal. So there you go, guys. Get on to calm.com. Use the code uh, banter. Get get 40% off. Fantastic. Cheers for sponsoring the podcast, uh, Manscaped and Cam. We'll jump right into this podcast. This is me and Mark McCarney in some sort of uh, rural fuck dungeon in the middle of Fentna, just having a right old laugh to ourselves. I hope you enjoy it, my guys, and I hope you're, I hope you're fucking well. You know what I mean? I hope you are good. Enjoy the podcast. I'm not used to the buttons. I'm not used to the buttons. It's, it's the, okay, all right, all right. Enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the General Banter Podcast. We have hijacked the office and studio of Sir Mark McCarney. <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> but anyway. Appropriate though. First question, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Fintna. Welcome to Fintna. You made it. Everyone's coming to Fintna. Are they? Well, <laughs> Mickey and Connor's recording here. Oh, they've the, they got a place here yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll have to get a premises here now. I might do, although it's one of those places that has a name where it's it's just no, it's nowhere, but it has a name, you know. Aye, Fintna. Fintna, you know. It's it like, is one it, of those where everyone's heard of it, but nobody right knows. Like you met us in, was that Fintna Town? Yeah. And then I was like, fuck, he must be close by. And then we drove for another, you know, 10 miles into the into the, the bush and... Uh, <laughs> It, it's about four mile, but to be fair, it was icy. It was. So we had to take it slow. On the way, before we met you, I had the car slightly sideways a wee bit on a few spots. We're coming, coming through off the, the Ballygally line there? Yeah, yeah, off the Ballygally line, yes. I've told you this before, as my father said, once you hit the Ballygally line, there's nothing. <laughs> the sun is our gritter. <laughs> we don't get salt or Just nothing. Just one fellow with the grinder <laughs> the whole way up the street. Now the pepper mill, the, Him- the Himalayan rock salt, the <laughs> yeah, way up the road. We have to do it ourselves, don't you? Well, a few years ago, I, I mean, I'm uh, I've realised after our trip to London, I'm I think I'm about ninety percent culty now. Anyway, I think as soon as you dip back into a town and you're like, fuck, fuck these cunts. Hi, your patience was weighing. Oh, I couldn't fucking deal with anything. I enjoyed it. I like getting away. I like getting home, but I like I like. I think it's just because we had to like work. You know what I mean? If we could go somewhere and just enjoy it. Instead of like always looking at the clock, like fuck, we gotta get over here, get that this, is the get job, this gig though. done. Yeah, In it is. Out. But the job should be we just go somewhere with a camera and film it. That should be the new job. Yeah, I concur. Speaking of jobs, have you had your cock in this doll yet? Well, if you're did. watching, if you're listening to this audio, there is there's a sex doll in the back. What's her name? Una. And uh, fully functioning fully mouth there. Function, yeah. How she much deep. was it? It's priceless. <laughs> <laughs> the joy that does brought It's me. as much as you want to pay to get a go on it. That's a good, I, I think I got her an offer. It's up and down. To like, be honest, I, I did get her off a very seedy website. Worth all. <laughs> Amazon? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Auto Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting a the tight this weather. Um, and it landed here. I think it was about £170. Pound. Are you joking me? Yeah. Is Look. that because you got the, the sport mode? The, vi- the, no, the vibrator came The, the vibrator back. in the back. The 4 before. She's got good traction. I bet you, I wonder was there some boy with just like fucking balls deep in her head. Just going like, wouldn't it, do you know what would be the cherry on this cake? If it vibrated at the back. Yeah. Uh, but if, if they keep continuing the way they're going, yeah. I can see women going extinct. I don't know. I, I, yeah, sort of. <laughs> Do you ever see these new Chinese robot ones? Well, I've seen the one that was in like a sperm donation lab and there was like a queue of fellas lining up like there were ATMs and they were just like, Zzz, and they put their dick in it and it fucking nah, 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 like that. But it looked like a, <laughs> it did look like an ATM, like a standalone ATM. And this guy was just like, dick in, drrr, squirt on the lunch break and then away back to work. See, I wouldn't trust maybe them ones. One wrong button, tear the cock clean out. <laughs> 
have to get her well lived. I'd hate to work in that place too, if that was your job. Like working in Abbott or just? Just fucking, well, it's just by standing behind you with a map waiting for you to finish. You done? <laughs> Up in <and> round it. <laughs> oh, get her cleaned. <laughs> like an MOT centre just? But it would be any, it would be like any sort of job. You'd be jaded after about a week. I've, told oh, it, I've, I've talked about it before, but when we make even in that sex shop, and we were all giddy, like two wee girls, like, we, we need a bad dildo. And the guy was like, what are you looking? I was like, we're yeah. looking like a big floppy dick. And he was like, well, they don't make floppy dicks because most people do want to ride them. So most of them are quite stiff. Um, maybe it's like a novelty type thing you're after. Would you ever uh, purchase uh, like a flashlight? I, like I wouldn't be... Like if it popped into my head, I wouldn't be like, let me go on Amazon and buy it now. But if it was, if it was, if we're in there having a bit of crack and yeah. I was like filling the basket, you know what I mean? I'd be like, I'll take one of them. I'll take that. Was that the got up your hole? <laughs> you know, I'll take. Uh, I'd just, I'd, I'd have a whole load of stuff. There's a yoke there. You can take. Oh, with that's you. right. You got the fucking. I'm, I'm manufacturing sex toys now wholesale. The butt plug and it does need a bit of file at the top there. <laughs> Who, who's this other one? Is that a dildo? <laughs> <laughs> As well For the audio folks I'm holding a 3D printed Butt plug Yeah It's I don't know It's tight going That's a, that's a brave well, Lump in your hole like. I've, I've done I feel like I've done shites As wide as that uh, but That's on the out That's going in I know but it is tapered at the top Like I don't understand the point Is this the like You put that up your shitter And It Sort of dilates your hole And then the next thing coming in Is a human cock See, I, I, don't, I don't know what way sex works anymore. <laughs> it's too, like, it, like, it used to be all you had to do after sex with a woman is give her a wee cuddle. Now they're asking you to piss in their mouth and choke them in the attic and stuff. So for fuck's sake. I know, I think there is, there's a lot of that chat, you know, you see it on TikTok and all where guys are like, why can't I just meet a nice guy who reads comics and wants to choke me while he fucks me? <laughs> and like, because they don't exist at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just want to cuddle and then fucking put his belt around my throat and hang me. But that's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> the, like the that's too many murder bill. documentaries all these guys like why can't it be a nice boy he's gonna take me for dinner and f- chop me to bits in a bath yeah, it's funny I've seen something else in it. like uh, women's idea of a uh, chill night in now is listen to fucking murder documentaries yeah. serial killers well that's it all you hear is you know like every every murderer has a fucking fan page like uh, what was that one that I mean the, the boy the night stalker and they're fucking mailing in knickers and all them aye <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Maybe that's what I should do. I should slot the used two boys here now. There's no, sell my knickers. There's <laughs> there's no there's no video going about there in West Belfast or something. Someone's landlord was like this 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 person thought they had a ghost in their house, so they put up a camera, and the landlord was coming in just walking around with the knickers on the face like being. <laughs> I was born in the darkness and fucking wanking on the. I was born in the dampness. I was born, <laughs> I was born in the moisture, and he was just fucking wanking on a rug and then wiping it in with his foot and leaving. Oh, for- Fox. Where was this? Somewhere in Belfast. I don't know. Up your direction. It was. Do, it was doing. It was doing the rounds. The, this video in the in the so WhatsApp. He's breaking groups. into the house. Coming he was, on he the was, carpet. He was the landlord of the place. Like, <laughs> and he came in and fucking <clears throat> just spaff on the on the rug and wipe it in. Weinstein a plant and then he just sniff mark, the knickers. Mark on his territory. We're talking about last night. Dave Elliott goes like, "Who's into that?" And I was like, "Well, it depends. Like, it depends what what knickers you're sniffing." You know, was she, you know, was she shooting a fucking web show, fingering herself? Are you sniffing them knickers? Or was she like ice skating all day? Or, uh, you know what I mean? Did she do like a fucking, fucking nine hour shift in a hospital? Dole Which is probably stankier. Well, that's what, that was the other argument. Like if you're into that. That's what you'd prefer. The, the worse, the better. Oh, and then I did see, this is another, TikTok's class. It's amazing the videos I've had taken down and then the things that I see. Oh, uh. I'm like, where are the standards here? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I've had ones taken down because I swore or something. And then, like, one of them was, like, an ISIS joke. And I got taken down. And then I see another video where this girl was like, you know, I'm doing custom orders for only my OnlyFans. And she just had an open can of tuna and about 10 pairs of knickers. And she was just dipping them in, setting them to the side and just going like that. And then she bags them up and sends them out. And some perverts <laughs> fucking in a shed in Fintan going, oh, <laughs> fucking right. Fucking hell. That is a queer scheme, right enough. Hey, fuck comedy, that's what I'm getting into. Dipping knickers and tuna. <laughs> Tuna's <laughs> dear, man. <laughs> that's my other, that was what I was thinking. No, I'll just use old engine oil or something. Um, <laughs> you didn't see OnlyFans trying to make the leap now to get, like, actual creators? 
and they're targeting comedians. I would take the jump, like from like Patreon to. You see, you see what I what I think is, see people saying they be doing good on OnlyFans because it's not like you specifically need a presence as a per, as an individual. You just you just fall into a category, and then people will like pay because they like things in that category. So you don't have to be like a famous porn star making millions. You could just be like, you know, I do, I'm the anal girl. You know, I'm big, I'm big into anal. Yeah. And then some fucking dude is like, I like anal. He looks it up and he goes, she's hot. And then you just amass a crowd. It's a great time to be alive. Eh? The thing I know, like, I wonder would it work for comedy? Someone's like, I like dirty jokes. And then a bunch of boys pop up and they're like, I like fat I like a, hairy whores and dirty jokes. That's all you're gonna get on only like fans. Corner of the market. Eh? Like there could be like a standard hot girl. I mean, there's so many niches. You could be like a standard hot girl and not do much business. And then you could be like, a, you know, like a something a bit weird. I don't know. Yeah, I seen it all. Like a fat girl with one arm, and <laughs> uh, there's some dude into it. Like, I'd get that other tip for you. I'd watch that. To be fair, just for the curiosity, of the whole thing. Oh, why? And it's no nothing sexual about it. You're just there for the the show. Fucking National Geographic, the freak show. Don't don't be. But no, I I definitely um. Even we're fucking we're lucky to have it. Like uh, we couldn't do what we were doing ten years ago. No, no way. Putting pure filth up, getting paid. Well, that's it. Like I remember trying to convince Mickey Bartlett to get into podcasts, and I was like, "Listen, if you told a comedian from the nineties that there is work that you could do in the daytime that would push you further, uh-huh. you'd be all over it." Yeah. And now you you jump forward, and I'm even doing it. Where you're like, "Fuck, I have too many podcasts to do. It's a nightmare." We need to get one together where the pilots get together and just get. Drunk, yeah, that's what I mean. I think my biggest podcast on YouTube is me, Mickey and Aaron in dailies, just sitting there with an old shitty setup, perfect t- talking shite, perfect. And I didn't even think it was particularly funny. I did it last minute before a gig, and I was trying to get out of town before the bands walked down the street. And was it what 12? Thereabouts, eh? But uh, didn't want the background noise, but yeah, people people enjoy that. Yeah, I don't get it either. Like, I don't really listen to podcasts. But I mean, a lot of a lot of people are. You know, they're like, I just like to put something on the background so I don't feel lonely when I live here in Australia. So that's what they want. They want to be like, oh, I feel like I'm sitting in a bar at home. Yeah, with these boys talking about wanking, flat out. Yeah. Well, they do say comedy is an art form. So we're Who's artists. <laughs> we're pure artists talking about jizzing. Is it an art? I don't think so. Nah, it's a craft, isn't it? I I would not. The stuff that I come out with, I you couldn't class it as art. Like some of the lines, some of the lines, I'm, I'm like, you know, if someone carved that into a bit of stone, it'd be beautiful. I think no, your your job is to make them forget a bit life for an hour. That's not what art does. Art makes you remi- remind you that you'll be dead soon. I well, I tell my listeners that every week too, right enough, but. <laughs> that's no point welcome to Morton McCarty <laughs> you'll all be dead soon it's before all you coming start to an end before you start complaining that this podcast is daily <clears throat> you'll all be dead soon but I wouldn't call it an art like Jesus Christ I think you're kind of pretentious if you call it an art uh, yeah I mean it's it's funny because being a comedian like being good at comedy you're in such a fucking tiny percentage of people in the world like, if you're a talented comedian, like, there's fuck all really good comedians. Yeah. You could find loads of, like, really good musicians. Oh, wow. You know, there's fucking people playing in bars that are unbelievable players and but stuff like that. As we were saying, stand-up's the last rung of the ladder. That's That was my next point. Yeah. You're st- it's like, to be able to do it well is so rare, but it's looked at as like you're just a wee monkey dancing in the corner yeah you know make me laugh when i'm not happy with it i can just fucking shout whatever i want at you and ruin your career that's the bit that pisses me off sometimes you know if i come off with a bad gig and i'm like when do i get entertained someone entertain me do you do you, that's one thing i've often thought nobody's saying it, oh it's, it's so hard being a stand-up now because you can get in trouble do you think that uh i don't know I don't think so because you have to remember in the fifties, you go to jail. You'd go to jail for saying "fuck" on stage. Yeah. Now it's just it's just social media. But I think yeah, it's social media, and then it's like the people that are getting sort of done have 
like they they would get sacked from a normal job for the things yeah. they were doing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if, if someone if your work found out if there was a bit of scandal around you and you're like, oh, you you know Jeff there, he works the tills, was texting fifteen year olds. He's less likely to get caught in fairness because he's not a famous guy, but. And the hateful thing is, he'd get queer material out of that. He would. <laughs> Jeff, you're wasted on them tells, bro. <laughs> Do we spot in between? But that's, as you were talking about, the last rung of the ladder. I like, yeah. couldn't, couldn't get a job anywhere. He'd be like, I'm doing stand up now. Well, that was it. It was always we were saying, but you know, the guys that are destroyed or ruined career ways, they always go, What's well, sure, I can do stand up. I know. Because nobody gives a fuck. Even I, I do believe Kramer could have come back with a fortnight later if he'd have Probab- slipped in. Probably. But I don't think, I don't think like necessarily everyone was like, He's a racist now. And you're like, I think now you definitely you could definitely can't drop n bombs anymore, but there was a time if you did it l- correctly, yeah, like Louis C.K. dropped uh, yeah. a few n bombs as part of a joke. Um, but someone just put it down that they were like Kramer was not a good comedian; like he was literally an open micer who was famous as fuck. Yeah, no, well, he his his bit was literally shouting just at a black guy. Just calling like a gay the N word like Yeah, it was bizarre. Whereas CK like puts it very well into his material. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, you're dealing with two very different operators there. Yeah. You know, a guy who was just like trying stand up because he was famous. Once again, but last rung, clinging on to it. And the guy who's like one of the best comedians of all time. And probably wouldn't even have to have all the Seinfeld money. No, nah, probably not. All them resid- residuals. But it goes to show you how, how many people are in it for like what do you, it's like? What do you really want? Do you want loads of money, or do you want? I think it's it's maybe just that LA thing where you're like you're you know people are think you're they'll think you're like fucked if you're not famous anymore. You know? Yeah. Whereas here, nobody gives a fuck about you. Because if I had Kramer money, I would be in like the Bahamas on a in a fucking hammock, oh, aye. just sliding into bars. Hey Jerry, greased up, you know, <laughs> Jerry, just fucking taking shots and shit. I wouldn't be, but that's the that's the disease, isn't it? You know, they're like, man, I used to be super famous because I was on one of the biggest shows of all time, and now I'm just doing an open mic here. I know there's days I'd be in here and look out through that window and think to myself, I wish I just got into a boat and le- left. And there's no water around here. Well, there's a big river. <laughs> it leads to somewhere. Killy bags, just get on. I'd work well in a boat, I think. You look like you've stepped off a boat. Aye. Looking for lobsters. Aye. That's a rough life. No, I, I think I'd suit that now. I just can't... I always think, like... You know, they always get these weird injuries. They're like, oh, fucking Charlie got his hand trapped on a thing and it snapped his hand off. And I see any of that, like, freezing cold, slopping about, you know, and a bit of chain hits you in the arm or something. You're like, yeah, but them, Them's hard, man. That Aye. man would lose an arm and they go, fuck, of another half an hour to the Aye. shift. I better get this crab in the boat so some cunt in like Manhattan can eat it for fucking $2,000. <laughs> I, I love the way they shoot them shows. Do you ever see like Ice Road Truckers? Not in a while now. <laughs> There's like a hole about 10 miles away and the way they shoot it is like a fucking like, action show. It's like really, really fucking fast paced yeah. and everything. And then you get up to it and it's just literally about two foot wide. Yeah. And the boy's like, I don't know if I get across this. I know, that's so American. Like dun, 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 dun. Cameras all over the fucking place. I was going to do a sketch to guy called uh, Pothole Truckers. Right, <laughs> we're just gonna do it here and do that all that cut, quick cuts and all, and then it just turns out to be nothing. Yeah, just a fucking dead sheep on the road or something. <laughs> What's a riding lane? Uh, it's where uh, a lot of our people would have came from. It's a place where uh, you can go and get a bit of privacy for some loving. Oh, so someone will just be like, "There's a nice spot up there, not a lot of traffic." Yeah. Pull into the side. Because there's a lot of roads Pull around here that are roads below, but it's where it's a lane. Yeah. The one we just came up. Oh, that is a lane. That's our lane. I was just, I was like, if any other cunt comes down this, we're fucked. I'm into the hedge. <laughs> that is our lane. Like, there's so many fucking, uh, there's so many lanes and stuff out here. Like. Riding lanes. But that's what they do when you're taking, not so much now. Surely like, any lanes are riding lane if you're, in a, if you're in a car. If you're brazen enough, any lanes are riding lane, I, but, um... Have you ever done any car riding? Like riding a car? In a car? In a car, oh, I. Yeah? Oh, my early days, that's mainly. I don't know if I, I just never even attempted it with the, the girth of me. <laughs> I'd struggle with a wank in a car. Um, Have a step out, take my trousers off, step back in. Pull, a, just, pull uh, a steering wheel what? off like a rally driver. See, you can't do that in the city. You'd be arrested. Yeah, you can walk away with the cock out and 
No, I'm not having it. Frostbit. <laughs> you wouldn't be long getting frostbit. <laughs> you wouldn't be long getting frostbit. <laughs> but I rain lanes and the big thing was years ago, a boy would say, "I'm with the woman here," and you'd know exactly where it's going. So you'd. Ten minutes later, go up his hole, flash and like fuck. Put up one of those Nest cameras in the tree. <laughs> to watch his arse bounce up and down. Just to be Google Home in her. <laughs> Fucking app. <laughs> ring camera. <laughs> I can see her ring. <laughs> but it's good to be in the country, isn't it? I'm, I'm a big country guy now. Yeah, you are. I am. I am. Yeah. I'm totally, like, yeah, yeah, I am. I remember before I uh, said to you about what was it like to be a culture now, and you're like, I'm not a fucking culture. Just like, oh, you're getting there. I, I like it. What's great is, you know, like, real country people will look at, like, city people and be like, sure, why would you be old fucking dragging yourself onto a train for an hour and a half to get into some shitty office and oh, fucking aye. sit there all day yeah, and, yeah. you know, force your lunch into your mouth as you're sprinting up a fucking escalator, you know. And then the, the city people are like, look at this fucking <laughs> pig fucking simpleton over here just yeah. staring out into nothing. But, uh, you know, like... I, I, remember, I think the country people are like, I just you go ahead and think that. I remember like whenever I like started stand up and going up to Belfast. I remember telling friends like, oh, I was up in Belfast twice this week, twice. What sort of miles do you get for that? <laughs> Love that take you. You have a helicopter in three days. It is a funny thing. Like I remember telling William here a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I think the first time I done Laveries was literally my third time in Belfast. Wow. That was because well, you had no one, reason, like it nothing was bringing me up. Like, was that one of your best gigs of all time? Because it, it was one of the best opening, like first time sets in Lavery's ever. I'd say <sighs> you and Jordy. Jordy had an absolute blinder too. I it was a like I remember growing up, like watching documentaries and reading about stand up, and the boys would often talk about feeling the laugh. Yeah, you know, like you'd feel the people like yeah. the roar, or whatever. And I used to think, fuck, that sounds like bullshit. But Lavery's was the first and only time I think I've ever had that that first time. You mean really? It's all been fucking... Was London it's not, all downhill was, since. was London not good? That was, a bit, that was a bit of a stormer, no? Yeah, London was a lot of fun, yeah. But I, I, I don't really notice much, hey, whenever I get on. It's just like fucking tunnel vision. I've never seen anyone more nervous before a gig than you. Oh, I'm, I'm the worst person to be around before a gig, like. Just, just hunched over just, like you're about to be sick. Yeah, Ugh. just sitting in the middle. Of fuck. Just thinking, why the fuck do my brothers go home and pull yourself off and forget about it? Eh? But then once I get it over and done with, it's great. So you do get there's a relief after. Not now. No, <laughs> <laughs> it was for a while to start, but the uh, so it kind of made like uh, you enjoyed it, or it's kind of like you write right. I'm fucking. I'm nervous here, but you get the relief at the end. Whereas now I'm still <laughs> nervous. No relief. You just go home to home, stay up all night, all, still nervous. I get home then, and all you can hope for is fucking them money con things, gusions. <laughs> <laughs> Stick your dick in the back of this doll over. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I kind of fall in love with stand up. Like one one month, I'm like, yeah, I'm all for it. And the next month, I'm like, oh, do you know the way? Do you know when people were like um, over lockdown, they were making people work from home. Yeah, and then people were like, "I actually really like working from home," and they're like, "No, you got to get back. You need a sense of community, and you need whatever." I think that's happened to me with, with like comedy, where I was like, "I'm only feeling the side effects of it now." Where I'm like, "I would like to actually be in lockdown and just fully work from home." Oh yeah, we, we, we I do regret not doing more in lockdown. Yeah, if they had told us right here, we, you're you're done for three months, you go great. But we kind of always expected it to kind of start next week. Was it me and you talking about that? Where they just, it was almost like you never knew when it was going to end. Yeah, like if they had it, yeah, if they told you up front it's going to be two years, you'd be like, right, well, I'm just going to fucking do nothing for two years. The only achievement I got in lockdown was growing this beard. That was it. And then you shaved it off and had it back in about three days. Oh, why? What is is that big testosterone levels? Is it? Is it ball gays of more testosterone or hairy gays? I thought you said ball gags. Eh? Ball gags, I thought you said. I've, I've said them too, you want to? I've said them? <laughs> um, yeah, balls is from testosterone. Too much? Too much testosterone makes you bald. <laughs> <laughs> Is right. On the head or the balls? Which one? Imagine you went bald with your pubes. Imagine waking up every morning, what was that? Oh, honey. Who was I talking to? I was chatting about hairy balls the other day. I was like, my balls aren't particularly hairy. 
And then someone's like, sure, what do you mean by hairy balls? Who has hairy balls? Mine would be quite hairy, I think. In the summer, it's like LA on fire. Why? Ah, smoky. <laughs> <It's just like laughs> dusty and smoky. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fixed like Schwarzenegger, not he? <laughs> oh, rolls over. No, I'm fucking hairy everywhere apart from the top of my head and my balls. Somebody was asking me in my podcast, maybe it's happened to you, do you sit on your balls much? Um, nah, not really. Not really. My legs are massive, you know, so that, you know, the, the, there's like two thighs kind of keeping the dick and balls to the front a lot of times. Uh, your bottom half is kind of like built like a space hopper kind of thing? Well, yeah, that... I've there, done there's cooler examples but I've yeah. done it twice now And I thought I was just going to end my life It's sore now I feel like you'd have to be nude though I think it's, it wasn't that I, was, I kind of Whatever way I went down to sit I was trying to cross my legs at the same time Yeah And then when I you sat down the, back. the nutcracker just kind of Winked round What's and the most damage you've ever done to your genitals? Uh, a doll hit me a drive in the balls one time At a teenage disco <laughs> It was only last week. And <laughs> <laughs> she was a police woman. <laughs> I'll never forget that now. That did put me back a few years that there now. Did she do it out of sp- like? I wouldn't happen- mind. She's living literally up the road from me now. I'm gonna go fucking beat the fuck out of her. <laughs> in front of her children. <laughs> <laughs> Just kicking her in the crotch. Yeah, you're like, hey, you got enough children and I can't. And to this day, I have no idea. I've been hit by a woman twice, like hard. And I never got to the bottom of it. I, we and a friend was in, what do you call that, nightclub in Dublin? Coppers. Coppers. And it, me and the George. Him, we were, uh, we were down there and about, it was rammed. And I remember you were literally like, everyone was just fucking squeezed together. And I remember I was just walking and going with the crowd. And I had my head down and looked up and this doll was just facing me. And she hit me the wildest punch in the face. Like, floored me like. A fella came up to me, like, put me up against the wall, and he was like, holy fuck, he says, you alright? To this day, I have no idea. I have a notion somebody must have grabbed her in the hole, and she looked round, and there was Gawk sitting there. And she just hit the first person she was looking at. Man, he got drive by. And I got, that was the, it, and the kick in the balls now was savage. Fuck we're still looking man. hard after, didn't we? <laughs> still came twice. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember in primary school, like, there was a girl... Like probably like her dad or something taught her just like if any boys are giving you shit, just knee knee them in the balls. But I I, I didn't do anything. She's I think she was just walking around different fellas going like, Look what I learned. Whack <laughs> And she and like when you really get unexpectedly smashed in the balls. Oh wow. You're like you can you, your vision just goes white and you're just like it is the shock of it, like. Oh god. I've only seen that um you ever see them machines that s- simulate is it cramps or pregnancy uh, there should be one for balls for the women yeah see what it feels like yeah and then hit them with drive anyway. <laughs> that was it's a good crack good when we were younger like someone's someone's fucking ma had one of these machines for you know like some fat bitch you put it on your stomach and go to sleep and think you're gonna wake up with abs oh i remember them. that's what it was Sim- similar thing like but we would just put on you put it on like one side of your arm so it only tenses one muscle and you just be like Arr! that's right Put it in like your hamstring and your leg just folds in half the other way. Just ah! Did you put it in your cock? It's pain. No, no, it would, it would melt your cock off. Like. Yeah. Well, this stage, I didn't really take any sort of feeling in it now. <laughs> get in that direction. That's right, I remember them. Good woman lying in the corner there. Yeah. Back of her head vibrating. We're too serious now. It's not as fun as it used to be. Uh, it's more like just marriage, isn't it? Yeah, it's more like a marriage. Every time I look, she's sitting looking at me. I don't know what le- we're just saying. What level of desperation you need to be to tackle into one of them yokes? I'll show you the funny later, but it's it's not. It's creepy. You'd rather have one of those like wee fat asses for the coffee table. Aye, you were talking about. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I would have laughed at that sort of thing until I felt it, mm. and then I was like, "God damn it, that is good, nice." But then you know, like I feel like a flashlight. We're back on the sex talk, but. You know, like a flashlight type thing. You, you I imagine you could just fire it in the dishwasher. Like you've got that whole, <laughs> you've got that whole set of legs and ass that you have to fucking <laughs> I can't carry it into the bath and shower it's our holding on. Fucking <laughs> rip it into one of them. You see them big wash machines outside Super Value? <laughs> <laughs> big fat hole going through. Yeah. No, I don't know. I think I'd rather just not have any form of 
sexual relief than touch. Look at the eyes piercing you. It's haunting. I don't know, man. If I was in a shed in the middle of Finna, <laughs> like if you popped out to the shop, I'd probably have my dick in it. <laughs> no, I couldn't. Well, at where it is without moving it. Just me up I, on the couch. Through over the couch. I mean, if, if to be honest, if it was me, I would just take a knife and cut the head off. <laughs> just go full dammer with the sex doll. <laughs> there's no there's no real need for the... I would just have the fanny separate and the head separate and just be switching between the two of them. Oh, well, uh, that, that's, uh, that's what you want. The blow-up body is unnecessary. What's the pocket pussy? That's a flashlight type thing. What's a pocket pussy with you? <laughs> Her name's Helen. <laughs> I she's mean, a, she's a midget under more <laughs> pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Why things say it, but stop being so sad. Why things? That seems I to be another know. TikTok uh, rage. Um, right, midget? No, they'll just, you know you'll see some like little tiny sort of hot dwarf lady who's like very curvy dancing about, and then it cuts to like some big black guy going like, "Yo, hear me out, hear me out." <laughs> <laughs> I have no objection to that whatsoever. Not at all. I mean, you know, he'd probably explain it to you. He'd be like, listen, why would I want a full-size fat bitch when I can have this one that's tiny? We had one at... With the same size ass and tits. We had one in primary school, and me and him always fell out, eh? You and the dwarf? Aye. He was a hateful wee bastard, like. (laughs) Nobody liked him. I um, uh, I hope he grew up into a better man, but in primary school, he was a wee cunt. And I remember, like, he used to fall out with everybody. And I remember one day it was like <laughs> it was like UFC. It was uh, told that me and him was fighting at like three o'clock. And I remember he was fucking like doing. Wouldn't get away with that nowadays, would you? Oh, the <laughs> fucking the bras the away. Gone. So you were you you were like you were on the fight card to fight a dwarf lad. Yeah, and I remember uh, before started, I, even I was like, this isn't fair. So I didn't want to punch him on so, you. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> So my only recourse was I uh, just helicoptered him over my head and threw him in the ditch. <laughs> and hey, they're they're tonight tenacious we hers like he kept coming back. Uh, and I just left it to me. I feel like I go to prison after yeah. this one. <laughs> no, I think he's all right now. <laughs> after like well, that, I was only seven at the time, so all right, okay. the rest away. What age is he? Thirty. <laughs> he's the teacher. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> we scheduled funny. a fight for you, McCarty. Settle this once and for all. My friend Benny will dete- attest to me. Hey, fuck, he was he was a hateful wee cunt of a cowboy. Nobody liked him. Nobody liked him. That's no, weird. You think you think he'd be jolly? Like you know? I could have been, but that, I suppose that's the stereotype. I suppose there's only seven types of dwarf, and he was <laughs> grumpy. Grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we're going to jail. Really was. We're going to jail. Oh, here we could say a lot worse. I can't believe that's real. Sort of God. I wonder if he's on Facebook. I'm not saying his name. What's he up to these days? Last I heard, he was. He was bus- busy as time of year, anyway. Him as dad. He was a butcher. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Just a wee mini fella, too. Uh, half loin. <laughs> <laughs> so many jokes, so many jokes. Oh, <laughs> God. I mean, it's so. It's just funny because it sounds so. Uh, Mental, it's just a mental yeah, story. Like, I do tell people stories time and they look at me like you're t- you're lying. I'm like, I'm not. Like, I remember we had a pet, we had a school goat, <laughs> <laughs> we had a goat for our school. Like, and I used to walk in <laughs> and out of classrooms, <laughs> <the> classrooms. <laughs> used to look meh and away again. What in the name <laughs> of Father Ted is going on around here? I swear to God, we had a three. school goat. Well, there was only twenty-seven in our primary school. You see, it's a very small school, and the right. teachers were just doing, and they, they had no budget. Did you still pick the fight with the the dwarf? Oh one? yeah, yeah. Nobody it's liked him. Even the teachers hated him. Hey? Even they were chanting to get his head kicked, and so they were just doing everything they could to keep his fucking uh, biddable. I feel like you could, you could get away with nothing in a, in a school with like twenty-seven people. Everyone's in your business, you know. <sighs> well, we I was the pr- uh, what the teachers, the pupils pupils you know what i mean like you could sort of shuffle into the pack in a, in a bigger school but no well, i remember like we went i went from the small school and then i remember going to the secondary school where it had like 300 pupils and i'm going jesus i think our our high school had like 2,000 people at it or something oh fuck or like 1800 people or something like that that's a full town 
Like we would have Per year You'd have about Six Or seven Like What would you call them Like Little group I forget what you call them in school But like little groups of classes Aye You know What are you in Fucking uh, 4B or something or uh, a, uh, Yeah yeah We had that too And there'd be about Six or seven of them But there'd be about 35 people in each class Oh my god I think it was big, big enough out of school, like. Jesus, no, I go cross eyed with there's fucking four people in the same room. Really? Oh, I. Fucking hell, that's wild. I like me, me, I like, I like solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> solidarity, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Solution. no, isolation. S- <laughs> Solid. Fucking spastic. <laughs> <laughs> See, 27 primary you, school. You need to go back to school. Uh, I know. <laughs> I. Being on your own. Solitude. No. Oh. What is it? Solitude, isn't it? When you're on, when you're just on your when own. You're on your own. <laughs> Solitude. Is that what I said? <laughs> Fuck me! Hey, we get up skill share hey, and relearn all these words again. But yeah, my God, I'm happy enough. Well, uh, I would have guessed that being, uh, you know, in a little shed by yourself in the middle of nowhere here. Yeah, it's probably a bad thing, right enough. Um, I think it's a good skill to have, you know, to be, to be good at it, you know, to be happy enough. Foot turn about by yourself. Mm. I like a mixture. There's a bit in there's a film called Five Year Engagement. Have you seen that? Oh, it's Emily a, Blunt. Emily Blunt and Jason Segel, and it's like unexpectedly maybe the funniest movie I've ever seen. Isn't he like a sandwich? He's a top chef, and then he moves <laughs> town with her because she gets a really good job at a university, and then he ends up doing he works in like a bakery and a sandwich shop and all this shit. That's right. But he's like a Michelin star chef. And he loses the run of himself, and he's out hunting and knitting jumpers and all. It's a great, it's a great film. <laughs> yeah, that'd be me. <laughs> but there's a bit where he's like, "I just want to be able, like." She finds out, he finds out she's like kissed one of her teachers or professors or something, and he's like, "I just want to be alone right now." And she goes to get up, and he goes, "But not by myself." <laughs> just stay there, and look at me. Yeah, just don't talk to me, but just be there. That's why I like. That's why I like my setup at home. I'm like, I'm gonna go out to the garage here by myself. Yeah. No, don't don't come near me, but just stay in the house. Just stay close. But don't talk to me. I see people you saw us because I'm the only child, you see. So when you say, oh my God, that must have been a wild, lonely existence. And I was like, no, it was great. Yeah. It was brilliant. Loved every second. Yeah, I don't, th- I don't see an issue. Because yeah. you can have the other. I mean, it's like, you know, it might be cool like later on in life or something, you know, and if everyone has fucking kids and everyone's running about. No, but then some people, like. I wouldn't be good I, if I have a wife and she's in giving birth and I'm out here in the shed. I but there's I mean there's people uh, like me and my sister we get on fine but we're we're not like super close we're very different people uh-huh. you know and then there's people who have brother loads of brothers and sisters don't fucking talk to anyone or they're fighting with each other and they hate each other you know I usually hear down here is always fighting and fucking it's, it's rare that you get a family full of people and they all get along like Maureen's family all get along and that's the first time I'd seen that my entire life. From any friend groups or anything that I'd seen throughout the years, mm. everyone oh, fucking, is true, everyone enough. hates somebody. Everyone fucking. <clears throat> and the big old families years ago, hey, fucking hate her name. Uh, the oldest one's it. left and went to America, and the youngest one hasn't even met them. No, oh, yeah, that's my old boy. Was the scrapings of the barrel? He <laughs> fell out of granny at forty three. <laughs> Why? And uh, like uh, he has he's Down syndrome, like but <laughs> 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 hey, something wrong. I'm like, but um. <laughs> I uh, like he like his his old his oldest the oldest died years ago and like he was kind of like hi my brother but I didn't really know him that well because he was like what was the gap then oh for like twenty three years it must have been would have been I twenty years I know, roughly uh, fucking hell do they all still live about like or are they away somewhere no they're all kind of around like Dromore Fentna you could just be standing behind your your brother in a fucking Sandra Daly. Yeah. Not know who the fuck he is at all. No way. That's, that's the way it is. But the, he even... Sorry to bother you. I <laughs> think I might be related to you. The ugly cunt. <laughs> the funniest thing, I was just talking, we were talking here a while ago. It's not nice, right? But the greatest relief a man must feel at a certain age is abandoning his family. Abandoning them? Yeah. Uh... Well, there is a quote somewhere where it's like, uh, "You're not a real man till your your parents die," or something. I heard something. Uh, along, something along them lines. A boy told me, but 
he never knew his grandfather, right? Yeah. Because at a certain stage, his, his grandfather left his family, right? Yeah. And for years they were looking for him. Like their <laughs> place was looking for him and all the rest. <clears throat> and he, he lived to a right old age and on his deathbed he asked for them to come see them. And it turned out he only moved a bit 11 miles down the road. Oh my God. And I thought that was the funniest thing ever. Because <laughs> I was like, he had to have crossed paths with them. Aye. And I just had this uh, image of him in a spar shop going, oh. Aye, just about to get out of the car. <laughs> and then and walking thunk, past. <laughs> pull the hat down now. <laughs> and I just thought that was so funny that he was like, I can't with these fucking people. And he moved just a bit 11 miles down the road. If you're actively avoiding them, that would be a tense life. You know what I mean? It'd be like fucking but that's how I was like, was proper like, on the run. His, his, it must have been so bad living that the relief of him... Like, he didn't even go to a different county. He just... Most people go to street. a different country. He went down the road. And they were all out looking for him. And him just... But I th- I genuinely think, like, see, see, back in the day, people probably still had the same, like, mental health issues slash illnesses as they do now. But it's way more accepted and stuff to be like, man, I just fucking can't handle any of this. I have wild bad depression or something. Or... Oh, what, I, in yeah. whatever form, but there's probably like a guy years ago would probably just hit the wall and be like, I am going to kill everyone or myself, so I'm just going to yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go away, sure, even and like, everyone will be fine. Like, it is only in recent years. Like, I remember at, uh, you know, at school, there was always like a, a class, you go, oh, that boy's a wee bit touched. Now it's autism. Yeah. You know, he's like, uh, they never really bothered to find out what the yeah. club needed or whatever. They just fucking shoot him into this other classroom. Now they're, now they're telling people their kids have like autism or ADHD or something and, and they're like six months old. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, fuck it. Is it not? Surely it's just a bit. Like, I've seen videos on the internet. It's like, how to tell if your child is on the spectrum and the kid's like bouncing up and down and like waving its hands and shit. And you're like, that's a fucking. That's a bobby. That's yeah. a toddler, man. That's what they fucking all do. Yeah, but I, which is the one of the child where they're like super geniuses, where they can fucking put the, all the colours in the one and all? Is that ADHD? I don't know what the fuck that is. Rain Man? Well, I have a touch of something, but I don't know what it is. I don't really want to know what it is. What it, what way does that show up in your life? Random erections? <laughs> Every way. <laughs> what way does it show up in my life? What are your main mental health see the, issues? See the noise in the cafe earlier? Uh, that was starting to do my head in. Yeah. Like I was, I was literally about to go. I'm I'm similar. I think that's ADHD. You're, like your your brain can't like multitask. Yeah. Like you were trying to speak and I was like, and I couldn't hear you. Yeah. And I was like, that fucking thing's doing my head in. And then I was just like, right, I gotta get, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of that too. <laughs> or like I'll be talking to Maureen. She's like unloading the dishwasher and I'm like, you can't. Do both of these things at once. Like stop the day, di- stop clattering about, and uh, just talk yeah. to me, and then go back to that. So, so I can't. Uh, there's like too much shit going on. Yeah, you know what so I mean. I say, you, we've got that. Now it's got AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of, we should all just stay in the shit for the rest of our lives, boys. Bunker down. Do you have any mental health issues now? Uh, I don't think so. Any anxieties? No, <laughs> they no, just fucking. Do you have a heartbeat? <laughs> just reptile Nile. Oh yeah, that's a sticker. Fucking Adams family driver. <laughs> I mean, to see to be honest, see, see talking to like any comedian, there'd be something. There'd be something going on. I never bought into this thing. Maybe like, oh, you're you have to be damaged to do stand up, but there is a there is a something in somebody to make you want to do it. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, like, de- definitely, um, yeah, there's definitely, like, a, even for me, like, an approval, not a, not even approval, but, like, even when I was growing up, there, was, there wasn't a lot of feedback about anything. I was allowed to just kind of run about and do whatever I wanted. Same. And I would do really well in things and r- really fuck things up, and there would be the same reaction, which was kind of, like, indifference. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't know what the fuck to be at here. So maybe, like, the comedy thing is, like, Instant. If I do this well and it gets a good reception, then I go, oh, that was good. So maybe you kind of fall into it that way. Yeah. But there is boys that kind of like, like there's Mickey that lives and dies by the stage. Like he Aye. needs that like boost. Instant gratification. Like yeah. at least once a week to keep him going to the next one. Yeah. Whereas I don't have that. And then you're kind of like, maybe I shouldn't be doing nothing if I don't have that bite as much as he has. Uh, yeah, but there's there's definitely things like, 
there's nothing I used to love more than like shooting a wee video and staying on and just completing it. Yeah. Like I had, I didn't have to get up in the morning. I didn't have any responsibilities, so I could. I, I remember sitting like at a table in my dad's house with like two coats on. You know, in the middle of the night, your house just gets freezing. Yeah. And I was fucking making cups of tea and just kept at it and kept at it and kept at it, and it was, but it was absolutely focused in flow quiet state. quiet flow state yeah and that's i think that's why i get like fucking frustrated a lot nowadays because i'm like i can't find that at all i can't even find time to like get into a thing everything's disrupted right doing do, doing too much eh? which is probably like i've probably had that forever but then as soon as you grow up and have more responsibilities and a child and a fucking wife and bills and all this shit everything is scattered all over the place and you can't just Block it all out. Do you want to abandon them and come up and live here? This is, looks all right. Yeah, we'll clean out that wee corner for is, you. Isn't it funny though? Because like I literally have a similar, like a detached garage. No, no, you have a way better setup than this fucking. Dunker. I mean, that's what I mean. It's fucking class. But then I walk in here and I'm like, this is what I need. <laughs> this is what I need. Some a ramly on, shack. Some planks on the wall and a, a super sir. A good gust of wine. This yoke's gone. Like I'm getting a fucking super sir, sir, sir. Well, that's the full hog now. You get a super sir, and I'm gonna get you dealer boots for Christmas. Uh, oh yeah, that's you. You're in the gang now. No more New Balance, fucking whatever no, no. these are nine somethings. You need the big th- fat toe on them, steel toe. Oh, I with the rubber bit over the yeah, yeah. up the front, the shell toe. In case you drop a pen on them or something. <laughs> <laughs> in case yeah. I knock a flat white off the desk and it hits me in the foot. <laughs> You'll be sorted. But, but see, to be honest, that, that is what, I, like, at the, especially after lockdown, everything was so busy and so crazy that I'm like, I would love to just be up in that wee office, you know, deciding to do something like this, you know, put a wee, a wee wall full of planks up. Just a wee jaw, you know, faffing about. I think men need a lot of faffing. Yeah, like, I, I would come out here and have full plans to do something and then they get lost and fucking building some bastard table or shelf or something but no i didn't know you were like you know fucking tony stark up in here but like <laughs> you turned around earlier and like ah, that's an old drone i was building <laughs> what no wonder you can't get this fucking movie it was out. a big uh, fun oh, time to make this film <laughs> oh you did <laughs> building a drone and fucking 3d printing a butt plug <laughs> i'm flat to the mat lad. No, that's terrorism. Love with drones. Yeah, I'm a real fucking. I love all that mechanically yeah. gadgety shit. Like I could fit it about with that all day. Like, and I've nearly edited. It's it's like, let's say if you need a, a mount for that camera or whatever. No, it'd make way more sense and take a lot less time to go and buy it. But I go fuck. I want to get a design it and print it. Yeah. Stupid, stupid. That's just me. That's just fellas, though. True. The older you get, you just think you're looking fucking just pure distractions. Oh, for sure. Just men. Just looking. what was that quote? Nile, you heard was it John Mayer? And he's like, you need th- something oh, uh, yeah. to stay up and look at at night or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's fucking riding about eighteen women a night. That's why. Uh, <laughs> there's some girl like over his shoulder, like John, would you fuck me in the ass? And he's like looking up, you know, like. Leatherman knives. <laughs> S- shut up, will you? I'm 3D printing you, horse. <laughs> <laughs> Quit fucking. Fucking leave me alone, will you? <laughs> it probably is. Yeah, I mean, you know, you think about it, like, you know, you're pro- most people are probably going, I'm not, I'm not doing as much riding as I'd like to. But, <laughs> but if you had as much, it's like a buffet. It's like a free bar. If you can have as much as you possibly... Put it this way, I went on honeymoon, right? And I'm going, I said I'm going on honeymoon. I'm going to talk about the buffet, not the riding. You go for breakfast every morning. Insane breakfast. Everything you could ever want in this buffet. Big fat Americans having like a side of bacon that would have fed 15 people. See, after the third day of two weeks, we didn't go for breakfast anymore. We just waited till lunch. Do you know what I mean? I too much. So too when much you have it. absolutely everything you want, yeah, you, you get your fill pretty quickly. And then you're like... This isn't sustainable. That's John Mayer. Well, that that's why they do say like they're the um, celebrities and rich whores are just dead inside because they have everything they need. And humans are always the type of the next thing. Well, I know the next thing, the next thing, next thing. But eventually you get to the point where it's like, oh, I'm done. I've, I don't need anything anymore. Well, that's it. We've spoke so, to some very wealthy people recently and they're just like, none of this stuff really adds anything to your life after a certain point. I mean... Aye. I was telling you that. Aye. 
Remember once you've 3D printed a butt plug and fucked a rubber doll in a knife? <laughs> Where do you, you know, sometimes you get to the top of the mountain and you're like, where's the next mountain? Well, I'm very simple in my goals. I'd, I'd say I'm having more crack out here than John Mayer is. <laughs> 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 Couldn't even say that was straight face. <laughs> <laughs> he's watching your face. He's on McCarney Plus. Uh, just yeah. like, fucking that lucky <laughs> bastard. I lucky may, bastard. I may have read Taylor Swift, but I've been in no riding lanes. Uh, <laughs> Did he write Taylor Swift? <laughs> oh, I. Would you write Taylor Swift? <sighs> I don't know why I'm sitting here thinking, of course. <laughs> I'd ride John Mayer. I'd <laughs> ride over me a fucking 18 wheeler or something. <laughs> but I was thinking about her albums. I was thinking about her albums. I was, I was laughing. I was thinking, you know, if I got up and said stuff on stage <laughs> about that, I'd get eight annihilated. But she does full, like, fucking symphonies over them. Names them and all. What do you mean? She had a song. Was it Dear John? She wrote a song about John Mayer. Oh, dear. Slander. Yeah, he'd probably rip through so many other checks by that stage. He was just like, "Who was it? No, I who, who was it again? Taylor? Riddle, then, cunt." I wonder, do you? I wonder. I know. I wonder, do you? When you, you know, like a Pete Davidson type character. Like, I think the next scandal with Pete Davidson is going to be like Pete Davidson had sex with a Wendy's waitress behind a skip. Like he's probably he's going to go like <laughs> full circle. Do you know what I mean? He's he's just he's just had like top notch checks for so long that he's just like, man, I just want some fucking. I, right. I think fair what? absolute play them. They were just going, what, what are these girls? What is wrong with these girls? You're like, fair play them. You must be doing something right. Do you know what? I think it's just about being chill. You know, he just seems like a chill. Di- like Kim Kardashian was going from like the insanity of Kanye oh. every night. Put my dick in your mouth. You're like <laughs> fucking cr- going crazy and like, I'm going to make a shoe out of baby, baby skin and all. <laughs> like losing his mind. You know, fuck the Jews and all that shit. And then, and then her next fucking you know like the breakup boyfriend was just some cunt probably just lying on a couch smoking well, there was, joints there was a clip of her saying that she literally uh, she texted him because she was looking some of that was the big dick energy she was mm. saying which fair play to her you know she was looking some love I'm looking some big dick energy they are I mean at the end of the day they are turbo sluts like after all the fucking products and the makeup shit and all the fucking TV shows and all they they just are a bunch of hoes, like. Oh. Lovely girls. Lovely girls. Funny, I seen. Uh, uh, like they're just, they're, you know what I mean. They're just they live for being inseminated by basketball players. Who who was it? Uh, who's the who's the billionaire one? Uh, I seen a clip the of the TikTok the other day of this young uh, Kylie, uh, Ken, Ken, no, uh, Kendall, Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Jenner sells the socks. What's his name? The fella. Bruce? Not Bruce. <sighs> he died, God love him. The, f- the fella. What's the fella? He he read, he, read, Rob? he read Black China. Rob Kardashian. Is it Black China? China? Black Black China. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? China. Beige Korea? What's her name? <laughs> what are we talking? I remember him. Topes. I remember Beijing. The, my ex used to watch away at them. Hey? Rob Kardashian sold the socks. <laughs> I remember the time. We were, it was near the time we broke up. I think this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Do you remember the episode where Jim got uh, robbed? I uh, in Paris. The tears were tripping me, laughing at this whole handling. And she fucking ate me. It's not funny. She went mental at me, like. And the more she ate me, the more I laughed then. And then we broke up about a week later. <laughs> Just because you, you went on a rager about the No, thing. well, there was multiple other things too, but I think that's what broke the whole thing. That was a straw. I will, you know what I mean? Like, fickle, very fickle. You need some security when you're rolling around with fucking a load of flashy shit. But I, that was, I, I seen a video, an old Kardashian clip on TikTok, and I was like, who's that there? And it was the Kendall doll growing up when she was like a teenager. Two completely different girls, yes. Well, me. it might be Kylie. K- Kylie. Who's was, the one with was like a wee Travis G- Scott? Kylie. She's the, Kylie the billionaire, isn't yeah. she? Or, it was her. Yeah, she they they basically I don't know. Well, all of them at this point like they ju- they just have they've harvested body parts from other people and 
like that big bitch, the fucking Chloe one, is a totally different human now. And so is, so is Kylie, actually. They totally well, so is like, Kim. Well, Kim's all over the place. Like, you know, she was like, oh, we're getting the big ass. Everyone gets the big ass. she got big tits. And then she's got the tits taken out now. And everyone's like, oh, man, we're going to have to get rid of these tits now. What are they sticking in them holes there? Pillows? In the arse cheeks? Uh, I think, uh, is it is that a BBL? They're like, you can... S- Blackberry? <laughs> BBM, like you can you can like suck fat out of your stomach or something and pump it up your up your arse. Fuck, I get that. Take it out and put it on your hole. Can you get it sucked out of your arse and pumped into your cock? <laughs> Brazilian fucking cock lift. I wouldn't even do. I do. I do something like I'd put it in my neck. Or something. <laughs> Just the back of your neck. Walking about. Just something really. I. People look at you like, there's something off about him, I don't know what it is. <laughs> He's got one big shoulder. <laughs> He's wearing two scarves wrapped in the middle. <laughs> what is it? Oh my god. It couldn't be good for you. Would you get any plastic surgery? If it was going down that route, it'd be a full makeover. Like, really? If tap to toe. Get, get the shins done? <laughs> 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 I get my shins injected into my ears or whatever the fuck. Um, I'd definitely get my bag tightened. A lot of boys doing this um, Brazilian ball lift. A lot of boys doing what? The wank, lipo, mm? or the band? No, the band. Sorry, the band. Yep. There's a few boys we know who yeah, are masquerading as oh, I've been hitting the gym flat out and they're fucking doing nothing. Do you know more than one? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why not? You know what I mean. If, if if that's if that's what you think you need, rather than just but what, like, is it just a elastic band around the gut into your stomach? I think there's two, a couple of versions of it. There's that one. I think it's the second time we talked about this on a podcast. Uh, you get one that like goes around your stomach, and then you get one where they like if your stomach's like a the shape of like a bean, they just shave a big portion of it. They, they like staple a portion of it so that you've only got a smaller stomach. Staple it to what? itself and then cut the, the extra nuts. bag off um but it, it it's mental because all it's doing is allowing you not not allowing you to eat as much which you can do anyway do you know what i mean like if you if you if you were just like right if this is all i can eat with you can imagine it guys if that's all you want to eat uh that's professional the way you burped off that mic if you want to eat Some the way you eat with you. a gastric sleeve you can do that without it yeah, but that takes willpower. With so instead, you'll take invasive surgery and pain and a recovery process and all that. That's, like, that's, by the time you recover from it, you could have lost fucking... That's what we're at now. But then I've seen some doll died in the table in Turkey from Belfast a couple of weeks ago. I, well, I wouldn't go to Turkey for anything. <laughs> Turkey teeth. <laughs> what did you get done? Well, I'm getting the teeth done, but I'm not going to Turkey. Uh, what, what would I get done now? Um... Don't know. She look at fucking. Uh, I think I'm right at the age where I'm starting to be like, them eyes are need, them eyes need work. An eye lift. Aye, but I think that's just having a child. Well, she look at the shape of Simon Cowell. Oh, I. Jesus Christ. He looks like someone cling filmed his head. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just pu- everything's pu- every bit of it's pushed out of <laughs> slightly out of fucking uh, place in she's every direction. It's not gonna tight frost. <laughs> um. <laughs> But you think somebody said him? He looks like he has a pair of tights over his head. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's robbing a bank. But he was always into that shit, and, he, and he's he's massively like insecure about a lot of shit. Like, do you ever see the wee fucking Chinese foot binding feet that he like? He's got he's very short, which is fine. But he he would wear these like little Italian fucking Chelsea boots. Boost them up. Boost them up a bit, and then he would wear like a flare jean that went all the way around it. So you wouldn't see the heels? That's fine. That's grand. But, I mean, his face, like, he looks, he stands at a mile, like. It's woeful. Yeah. Just get old. You know what I mean? I was watching uh, Louis Theroux talking to um, Judy Dench. You know, she's just an old doll. She Great just, woman. Hey? Oh, fantastic. Old but she, school. But she just went, she just got old. Yeah. That's, that's the way to do it, like. And probably... She's more like busy now than ever, because she's like the go-to old woman to yeah. get Bond yeah. and stuff. Class and a wood too. Mm. Oh, aye. Judy Dench. Would you get them wrinkly digits around me? 
get danced. Mm. Judy Dench, boys. Damn Judy Dench. Her and Miriam Gargoyles. <laughs> Her? Just on TikTok, farting on people? <laughs> When you just want that, boy. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny uh, the way, like, what is it about her where she can go on, like, the one show and be like, when, when I was in college, I was getting fingered behind a bin, and everyone's like, what is she not like? Uh-huh. And anyone else, you know, accidentally says shit, and they're oh, like, we would like to apologize for his yeah. language. And she's like, I queefed in another lesbian's mouth <laughs> at Easter time once. And she's in there wearing, like, a frock and a pair of Asics shoes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It goes like, uh, we're talking about cream in her knickers. We go, all right, let's go to Gino now, doing a Pavlova over uh, there. He's like, tell me more about cream in her knickers. <laughs> I got carbonara down the front of my gusset. <laughs> <laughs> we can't slobber us now, mate. Now. Oh, was that right? Him and, G- him and Gino were fucking tight. You're the... Having I... 11 cellos in the balcony. Oh, just <laughs> 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 Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're the most well-connected man I've ever met. You can get anything. <laughs> Jesus, that's Tara. Big buddies with Gino. What's he like? He's Welsh. He's dead all. <laughs> <laughs> he's, all <right>. he's not <laughs> even Italian. Let down he's Italian. Very yeah. good. Where is he living? The bungalow? He has a few gaffes now. Gino De Campo. I have a photo somewhere. You know Fred Silly Sacks? Just, give me, give me time. Just them two and Ramsey just run around naked everywhere. Who's the most famous person you know? She and Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Who, do you know any famous people? By no, it has to be like you'd walk into a room and they'd be like, "Oh, jeez, Mark, what's cracked me?" Oh, why? That could be anybody. I know. <laughs> Just some fella selling you a Ferrari. Some boy looks similar from from from, from the back. Did you not get a wee group photo with him? I did, but I don't know where it is. What are we filming from? Uh, gin. We need to do that. Release a gin? Yes. It's the next step, I do believe. What would be the most... Ab- I think would beer just be the most appropriate one? Or a whiskey? Or whiskey. Uh, do a whiskey. A whiskey would be good. What would you call it? What would you call it? Wet whiskers? Widow's, widow's pish. <laughs> what would you call it? Uh, sticky fingers. Sticky fingers. Uh, what is your spirit of choice? Uh, yeah, it would have to be whiskey. Uh, like I don't uh, I don't really drink vodka. Um, I don't really drink anything, to be honest, but it would it, definitely a whiskey. An Irish whiskey. Oh, that's hard to do. Proper 13. Uh, well, you just you ring someone up and be like, can you put a new label on your whiskey? That's all you do. Just go to the shop and buy a case of Jameson. We'll just I 3D print the lid on <laughs> it. Blow the them off. And that's pretty much. Put on a tenner to the price. Yeah. What's a fun name for our, for our whiskey? Fishy Tash. <laughs> I can't even think of a fucking good decent name. I, I could sit here for hours pondering. Riding pondering Lane. That, huh? Riding Lane Special. The pot... The... The Jew something? The vagina Jew? <laughs> Soaked? The foggy Jew, but the it's foggy Jew. J-E-W. <laughs> Tasty? Bad aftertaste? <sighs> Prost- no. Just called straight whiskey. H- hooker spit? What did I see you drink there a while ago with the fuck? Hooer's Pish? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beer called Hooer's Pish. I think it's called. Or is it? I uh, something like that. Hoor's pish. H o o r s. I think I've seen a beer. Oh, one there's day. like cute her. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's called a uh, hooker's discharge. What was it called? Cute her. Aye. That's the one. Uh-huh. So, same thing. Give me a half one of Heidi's Heyman. <laughs> Sorry, tenants. <laughs> <laughs> this is him. <laughs> That's what it's called. Hoor's pish. <laughs> That's what I need. Hoor's pish. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. I, 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 I do wish I would love to have like a side business. 
for like fun more than anything else. Yep. I don't know what it'll be. A whiskey'd be good now. That'll be. Could good you just here's what we'll do. We've talked enough shit here for for a while here. We'll make a plan right now. Okay. We'll make a. We'll make a film, and then we'll pepper the film with product placements. Yeah. That's what we'll do. Michael Baystead. Yep. I think we already have a slight idea for a film. Mm-hmm. You know, with uh, it'll be a mock doc style. And you'll be like, is this real or not? And the whole time, every scene will just be drinking. Hers pish. Yeah. Vintage t-shirt, hers pish. Uh, I can see it right now. Fuck, Stan, there's a multi-million plan there, like. Yeah, it's going to cost us multi-millions. Text DiCaprio with her, does he want to know Gino DiCaprio? <laughs> <laughs> DiCaprio's own, what do you call him? <laughs> He'd invest in her. We'll just get the... We'll get the... You don't need investment. I have a bath out there, we can mix it in it. Yeah. And we'll funnel it in. You can do the logo. You got Microsoft Word? Yep. <laughs> Paying for it? Up front. I'll take a few photos. Yeah, film next year. Whiskey brand, yeah, and then the six last six months of the year, we're just gonna go hold this. Here's my goals for next year write and shoot a film, right? Also, go on some sort of epic trip with a group, film it, you know, Vietnam type thing, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Route 66. Route 60, 66 Roots by February. There's roots, the roots, too. 66 Roots. Yeah. <laughs> route 66. Yeah, we'll do that one. Hire some fucking ridiculous car. Yeah. Cost you fucking 80,000 pounds <laughs> to get from one side to the other. In a Mustang. <laughs> one of the no top ones. You should do one of those Jim Canna videos with that wee tractor. Who? Did you ever see those... Who does them? It used to be Ken Block, and then it moved on to like Travis Pastrana. Yeah. I'll show you one after. It's basically like the it's like monster. It used to be. Oh, it's like monster, monster, and then they'll have a load of like high profile sponsors, and they just put out one video of this mad cunt driving like a rally car through a city and jumping over bridges, and there's a helicopter and a fuck. It's insane, but it's a good way. They just do one video a year, and like a hundred million people watch it. You want me to put that tractor over a helicopter? <laughs> Well, you've already broke the drone, Mike, so just get that back up in there. Oh, he's dead, but sure, at least he's in Red Bull. Yeah. Bit of Irish fish. Aye. So retire from stand-up next year, you reckon? It's dead, man. Everyone's at it. Everyone's fucking... You know what I mean? It's getting no respect. Yeah. People are fucking... You're turning up saying the same shit. Let's do new ideas. I like it. You know, people are people are going like, oh, what should I do in my life? Let me try stand-up. Fuck, fuck off. Tear away. An original soundtrack. Yeah. We get on that Spotify chart some way. Absolutely. I'll be like, I'll be like Fred again on the fucking roadcaster. You don't know who that is either. You don't know who that is. Just just words you're saying to me now. (laughs) What? Fred again? Fred who? Right. We'll wrap her up, (sighs) Ola. Cheers for letting us come down and use your uh, facilities. Boys, you're welcome here anytime. The kettle is always boiled. No one actually. He's got his doctor. Don't worry about it. I'm paid for it's coming off the line now. Right? <laughs> he's got a dog on a wheel out there. <laughs> things are dead. Uh, well, boy. Uh, right, right here. Good luck. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. <sighs> Bump mics. Oh. It's not having the same. It's not having the same effect. It's a really soft one. Take the condom off her. And the haze too, boy.